Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Welcome back to the fifth lecture of Chapter 6. In this lecture, I want to do a final example that comes up in a lot of different types of applications in many, many forms. Okay, here's the example. It's an autonomous vector field on the plane. x dot equals y, y dot equals x minus x cubed minus delta y. Delta is a parameter. Delta is greater than or equal to zero in general. Could be negative, but uh, that's not so interesting. But in this example, we're just going to consider it to be strictly positive. And you'll be able to get a hint of what happens when it does vanish. Okay, there are three equilibrium points. Clearly, y equals zero has to be a zero, and that may, that's nice because this goes away. And then x minus x cubed, or x equals zero plus or minus one. Now we can linearize about those and check the linearized stability. The Jacobian of the vector field without evaluating it on one of the three equilibria is given by this expression. And it's a two by two matrix, and we can compute the eigenvalues explicitly. And we see that it involves x squared, and we want, when we want to evaluate it on one of the equilibrium points, we need to just put in the appropriate value of x. This handy little formula for, for eigenvalues of two by two matrices you may know already, but it's derived in Appendix A, and it's really useful. You use it over and over again. So the origin, the eigenvalues, are given by this expression. Notice minus delta over 2. And a little bit of thinking in algebra. It's not hard to see that the eigenvalues of the origin are always real and opposite sign. Now, so this implies that the origin is a saddle, regardless of the value of delta. Okay, the other two equilibrium points, the eigenvalues are given by this expression, and we have to look at two cases for delta, squ delta squared minus 8 greater than or equal to 0, the eigenvalues are purely real. For delta squared minus 8 strictly less than 0, the eigenvalues have a non-zero imaginary part. Now we know what that means. We, it means that uh, we have some spiraling around the equilibrium points as we approach them, because these two equilibrium points are always sinks, minus delta over 2. So this is what the local stable and unstable manifolds look like in the two cases. In the case where we have non-zero imaginary part of the spiraling around, the origin, remember, is always saddle. And in the case where we have purely real, trajectories just approach the origin, sorry, approach uh, the equilibrium points at uh, minus 1 and plus 1 along lines. Now, a couple of things you need to think through for yourself. Do I have the spiraling in the right sen sense? Do I have the correct arrows on the manifolds? I do, but you need to understand why. And that's, and that's a nice exercise to think about. What about the angles between the uh, stable and unstable manifolds of the origin? They're just the local stable man and unstable manifolds. Do I have that about right? A lot of things you can figure out from the equations. Now this, these are the lo local manifolds, and this is something you, sh you should be able to do right now. Three different equilibria, two attracting equilibria, two sinks, one in the right half plane, the other in the left half plane with a saddle in the middle. What would the global manifolds look like in the two cases? They would look something like this. Now, you don't have the tools yet 
to conclude this. But as we go along through the course, you will pretty much develop the necessary tools that will enable you to understand this picture. So let's just look at the one the picture below. We see that the unstable manifold of the origin spirals in to the sink. The stable manifold does something different if you follow it around. The picture's a little messy now. Remember, you cannot cross stable or unstable manifolds. So, if you start in this region, where do you go? Well, you go into the sink on the right. If you start in the other region, where do you go? You go to the sink on the right. I think the first time I said right, but you mean left. You get the idea. So, the unstable manifold, the stable manifold of the origin somehow is the boundary between points that will go to the right attracting set or the left attracting set. And that's one of the, one of the other reasons why these stable and unstable manifolds are important. Okay, we'll pick up on that as we go on throughout the course. A nice idea. Think about what I just did and the significance of the, sta the, of the stable manifold in this particular case and think and, and convince yourself that it behaves exactly the same way when you have purely real eigenvalues for the sinks rather than having an imaginary part where you have spiraling around. Okay, that's enough for now. That finishes up chapter six and I want to talk about the problems at the end of chapter six in the next lecture and then we're going to go to uh, the next, the chapter seven, which is about Lyapunov's method and the LaSalle invariance principle. And that's going to give us some tools for understanding pictures like this. So till next time, goodbye.